The Journal of Advanced Materials have revealed the strongest battery in the world. Now, interestingly, it uses Tesla, very similar technology to what Tesla pioneered with its structural battery packs. Here are the details behind what many are saying could be revolutionary for the entire automotive industry. Now, keep in mind, much of the automotive industry has begun using structural battery packs designed by Tesla. And now in China, that's becoming basically the standard. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. If you'd like to support us as a YouTube member, that'd be great. I'll put a link in the description below. Now, speaking of structural batteries, the EV that I've been driving and that I own now is the Xpeng G6 that has a structural battery pack. And that obviously helps to improve the crash safety rating that it gets. And it's not just about crash safety ratings, to be honest with you. It's about re real world, real world details, real world uh, reality, which is that structural battery packs, when you've got one of those in your EV, you're less likely to have or well, to die from a side impact. The side impact test is the biggest one here for structural battery packs. Well, here's the thing. They're actually getting better. The strongest battery in the world is, has been tested recently and it's designed as the strongest functional structural battery and it's been unveiled by researchers in Sweden. This device has an elastic modulus that is much higher than any previous design and was developed by Leif Asp and his colleagues at Chalmers University of Technology. The battery could be an important step towards lighter and more space efficient EVs. Space efficiency in an EV is already pretty damn impressive in a lot of electric cars, but Volumetric energy density in battery packs is one of the big differences between cars today and cars 10 years ago. Today, volumetric energy density is hitting 75 to 80%. Back then, it was at about 50%. So having a stronger structural battery pack enables a vehicle to be more space efficient, to be lighter, to be stronger, and to be, well, often to get more range as a result of those things. Structural batteries are emerging technology that store electrical energy while also bearing mechanical loads. They could be especially useful in EVs where the extra weight and volume associated with batteries could be minimized by incorporating the batteries into a vehicle's structural components. Tesla mentions that its structural battery efficiency in vehicles with the 4680 battery cells is at around 75%, which is very, very high. In 2018, AFS team made a promising step towards practical structural batteries and was rewarded with a mention in Physics World's top 10 breakthroughs of 2018. Now, it's possible that Tesla saw that and very quickly began making their own structural battery packs. That year, the team showed how a trade-off could be reached between the mechanical strength of highly ordered carbon fibers and the desired electrochemical properties of less ordered structures. Building on this, they unveiled their first generation structural battery in 2021. They said that they used carbon fibers as the negative electrode, but a commercial lithium ion phosphate on an aluminum foil as a positive electrode and impregnated it with resin by hand. This involved using a biphasic solid liquid electrolyte with the liquid phase transporting ions between the electrodes and the solid phase providing mechanical structure through its stiffness. The battery offered a gravimetric energy density of 24 watt hours per kilogram. Now this was of course much, much lower than structural battery packs today, which deliver around 250 watt hours per kilogram. So the team knew they had a lot of work to do. By 2023, AF's team had improved on this approach with a second generation structural battery that used the same constituents, but employed an improved manufacturing method. This time the team used an infusion technique to ensure the resin was distributed more evenly throughout the carbon fiber network. In this version of their structural battery, the team enhanced the battery's negative electrode by using ultra thin spread tow carbon fiber, where the fibers are spread into thin sheets. This approach improved both the mechanical strength and the electrical conductivity of the battery. At that stage, however, the mechanical, the mechanical strength of the battery was still limited by the lithium ion phosphate positive electrode. Now, obviously, LFP batteries have a, a lower energy density than NMC batteries. So that was part of the reason. Now the team has addressed this challenge by using a carbon fiber based positive electrode. And this is the third generation 
and is the first all fiber structural battery as has always been desired. Using carbon fibers in both electrodes, we could boost the battery's elastic modulus without suffering from reduced energy density. It's essentially like a carbon fiber battery, you could say. To achieve this, the researchers coated the surface of the carbon fibers with a layer of LFP, or lithium ion phosphate, using electrophoretic deposition. This is a technique whereby charged particles suspended in a liquid are deposited onto substrates using electric fields. Additionally, the team used a thin cellulose separator to further enhance the battery's energy density. All of these components were then embedded in the battery's structural electrolyte and cured in resin using the same infusion technique developed for the second generation battery. So what does this all mean? Well, the latest improvements delivered a battery with an energy density of 30 watt hours per kilogram and an elastic modulus greater than 76 GPA. When tested in a direction parallel to the carbon fibers, this makes it by far the strongest structural battery ever made in, in human history, exceeding the team's previous record of 25 GPA and making the better the battery stiffer than aluminium. Alongside its good mechanical performance, the battery also demonstrated nearly 100% efficiency in storing and releasing charge after 1000 cycles of charging and discharging. So this battery actually sounds incredible. It's just the, the energy density of the battery is very low. So obviously the team have constructed a battery, constructed a battery with the aim of making it the strongest in the world, but not making it really all that practical. But there are some things we can take away from this, which I think might be incorporated in the industry. Building on this success, the team aims to further enhance the battery's performance. We are now working on small modifications to the current design. We expect to be able to make structural battery cells with an elastic modulus exceeding 100 GPA and an energy density exceeding 50 watt hours per kilogram. That would mean basically they're gonna triple the strength of this battery, they believe, within the next couple of years. If they were to do this and other manufacturers were to potentially use some of these techniques, this could mean much, much safer cars. This ongoing work could pave the way for much stronger and more efficient structural batteries, which could have a transformative impact on the design and performance of EVs in the not too distant future. It could also help reduce the weight of laptop computers, airplanes and ships and anything else that needs batteries in them as well. My big takeaway from this is the fact that they are so heavily relying on carbon fiber. Carbon fiber sounds expensive, sounds exotic, sounds like, well, putting that in a car, wouldn't be that a cost efficient or effective, but from what I've seen, it is. In fact, at Terra are building their new three wheel electric cars, which are affordable, almost entirely from carbon fiber. Now there are companies which can make you entire sections of a car out of carbon fiber using carbon molds. Now those carbon resin injection molds, they're actually very similar to casting. So very similar to Tesla's giga casting technology. What this means is that companies could develop large casts which can efficiently and quickly manufacture large carbon fiber structural battery packs. Now, in my opinion, that is the key difference here between the automotive industry structural battery packs and the ones that they used. This strongest battery in the world used carbon fiber. So it is entirely possible we could see in the future much stronger cars which utilize carbon fiber in their structural battery packs. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments. Bye-bye.